I mean, when I'm in town again, we should go for a ride together. The kissing booth three ends with a six-year time jump that reunites Elle, Noah, and Lee, a cheesy conclusion that still manages to be underwhelming. You know, doing what's best for our relationships, but I haven't... Netflix's The Kissing Booth 3 wraps up with a feel-good ending, but the conclusion wasn't right for the rom-com trilogy. Netflix dropped the first The Kissing Booth film in 2018. Based on Beth Eagle's books of the same name, it didn't take long for the streaming giant to order the sequel, which dropped in 2020. With two films already out, it made sense for the third one to follow, especially since the novels the movies are based on were also published as a trilogy. Set in Los Angeles, the Kissing Booth franchise follows L. Evans, Joey King, a high schooler who's starting to transition into early adulthood. She is joined by her best friend, Lee Flynn, Joel Courtney, and his brother, who eventually becomes her love interest, Noah Flynn, Jacob Lordy. Together, the trio navigates the complications of their relationships with each other. Noah, then, had to move across the country to Boston for college, which became the primary conflict in the kissing booth too. With a much bigger cast also came a more complex narrative. Elle struggled with her setup with Noah, and Lee's new relationship made her feel alienated, driving her into the arms of Marco, Taylor's Acker Paris. The kissing booth too ended with Lee and Elle graduating high school. Meanwhile, she and Noah were also back together after a brief breakup. But, Elle was faced with another problem. Where would she go for college? Well, I might have invited a few people over tonight, you know. UC Berkeley, as she had planned with her best friend, or to Harvard, so that she wouldn't have to go through another long-distance relationship with her boyfriend. This was the central narrative coming into The Kissing Booth 3. However, the story was muddled by additional, less compelling, plot lines. In the end, Elle ultimately decided to go to USC, separate from the Flynn boys. The Thrakel wrapped up with a six-year time jump in which everyone is back in Los Angeles, while Elle and Noah rekindled their romance. Despite a mostly happy ending, there are several issues with how the Kissing Booth franchise finished. The Kissing Booth 3's storylines don't work, with the Kissing Booth 2's cliffhanger ending functioning as the jumping point for the Kissing Booth 3, one would assume that Elle's college decision was going to be the central conflict of the Thrakel. However, that wasn't the case. Instead, the movie kept introducing smaller and unnecessary plot lines that only overcomplicated the storytelling. Chloe's, Macy Richardson Sellers, return didn't have any impact whatsoever other than seeing her back, even her personal storyline which revolved around the impending divorce of her parents didn't go anywhere. Marco's role in The Kissing Booth 3 was essentially a rehash of his arc in The Kissing Booth 2, only this time, Noah was physically present to witness him shamelessly trying to flirt with Elle. Similarly, the tug and way between the Flynn boys for Elle's attention has already been done in past films, and it need not be repeated again. Had The Kissing Booth 3 stuck with its original premise about Elle's college choice, perhaps it could have crafted a better ending. Maybe sometimes loving each other just isn't enough. The Kissing Booth didn't even factor in the film, to be fair, after the first movie, the titular Kissing Booth was pretty much inconsequential to the franchise. But at least The Kissing Booth 2 tried to incorporate it in an organic way. The sequel actually spent time with it, although it didn't have the same impact on the narrative as its predecessor. The Kissing Booth 3, on the other hand, horribly shoehorned it at the end, just for the sake of showing it. Admittedly, it would be tricky to find a better way to integrate the Kissing Booth in the Thrakel since L and Lee have graduated. But surely there are better ways to include it in the story than just forcing its unneeded cameo. Noah and Elle's relationship arc doesn't make sense, as in The Kissing Booth 2, Elle and Noah once again broke up in the Thrakel. She had already chosen to go to Harvard to be with her boyfriend, but Noah realized that Elle only chose Harvard for him. So, he decided to split up with her, and this time, their separation lasted for six years. When they reunited following the time jump, they needed to catch up with what was going on with each other's lives. What's weird about this is that it's implausible that they'd never kept in touch throughout all those years. For starters, they're essentially part of an extended family, surely they bumped into each other during holidays and special occasions. <laughs> if not, both would have heard updates from their relatives about how the other was doing during their breakup. Secondly, and most baffling is that Noah even talked about still protecting Elle on the heels of their split. But how could he have done that if he severed all contact with her? Whoa.